kilo. <laughs> and I thought I knew him too. Until he started doing some remarkable things. And I said, Lord, I, I knew you for real. But I know you were that real. <laughs> oh my God. I can't begin to tell you. You know, sometimes we think about, I'm trying to get with you later here, uh, we think about what his word says. And we know it's true. We know it's true. But once we get it down in our spirit, like it should be, he can work. You know, he can't work against your will. He refuses to do that. If you don't believe, then he just lets you just kind of hang loose until you decide or get around to the point where you do believe. But he is an awesome God. The, song, uh, the children just sang, uh, he reigns, and did they just sing that? He reigns, well, I hear it in my spirit. He reigns in heaven above. He's wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And what I came to tell you, and I don't plan to be very long, but what I want to tell you, there's another song that says what's coming is better than what's been. And that's what I want to tell you. What's coming is better than what's been. And the reason that some of us don't, uh, if I can use the expression, hang, the reason we don't stay where we should with Christ is because we don't believe that it's going to get better. That's right. We think I'm going to have to live in this stew forever. <laughs> because you know, we have a different uh, take on the Word of God. Now here's what we think. The scripture, I mean the song, another song says, better days are coming by and by. And we will have a home in the sky. No. <laughs> are coming right now. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Things are going to get better yeah. in this life. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I got word for it. I'm not here to be All right. What's coming is better than what's been. Amen. So, what's coming is better than what's been. Yeah. We're so thankful for the privilege to be in the house of God and to proclaim his truth and his word. In the book of Luke, uh, if you will read for us. Yeah. 
many of you don't believe that? Well, don't raise your hand. But some of you really don't believe that he's going to work it out. So you say, well, I'm going to have to handle this myself. Some of you say, I got in this mess myself, so I'm going to get out myself. What makes you think? If you were stumbling in the dark last night, that you're going to stumble out.
what's coming is better than what's been. Amen. Somebody said, well, I'm not afraid of hell. You don't have to be afraid. You'll get there soon enough. <laughs> God doesn't seem concerned about your fear. Good master, what shall I do? But he said now in Mark, he said, no man that have left houses, mother, sister, or brother, houses or land, shall, you better read it for yourself, but you shall inherit in this life 100-fold yes. houses and land, yes. mothers and fathers, sisters, all that in the world to come, eternal life. It's not just about not going to hell, folks. It's about enjoying the life that you live now. That's right. It's not just about not going to hell. That's right. No, I don't want anybody to go to hell, and I know you really don't want to go, but you figure you're going to escape because just about time you make your last breath, you're going to say, Lord, have mercy on me. I believe in the Son of Jesus that he died for my sin. Amen. <laughs> How many people said you're going to be able to take your last breath? That's right. I mean, how do you know that you're not going to be able, how do you know that you're not going to die on the spot? That's right. You know, there's a true story of a woman who lived in a house with an abusive father. And the mother used to pray all the time, praying for the father. She wouldn't divorce him, wouldn't leave him. She said, I'm praying for the salvation of this man. And I think it was about 30 years she prayed, and the, and, the, and the man was abusive to the children and to the mother and everybody. And she just her, she just kept telling her daughter, God's going to fix it. And she was just getting tired and sick of, yeah, I don't know what mom, I don't know what's wrong with mom. I don't know why she don't get rid of this man. I don't know why, she, blah, blah, blah. But she wouldn't do it. She kept praying. So one day, true story, one day, the man said, look, if you're here when I get back, he said, you better be praying to your God because I'm going to take care of all of y'all. Take care. You got to understand. And so the woman got her prayer partners together and she started praying, had them to pray with her. I don't know how many it was. She just said her prayer partners. And they weren't just praying in the house, but they were praying over the phone and just interceding in her head. Because some kind of way, she had no fear. She believed that God was going to manifest himself. At the end of the day, instead of him coming home, she got a call. And the call was from the hospital. And some kind of way, the man had been in an accident and was stricken uh, from his head to his toes as a paralytic. I mean, it's para what do you call paralytic? It's whatever. Everything's paralyzed. The spine on that. And she said, she's grown now, but she told the story. She said she never dreamed that God was going to answer the prayer in that way. She was looking for God to save the man and, you know, let him be a good father. Of course, she'd grown by then, but God paralyzed that man and he was not able to do anything from that day forward. Now, what, what we're saying is their life became better, but his became worse. What's better is coming. And it's going to be better than what's been. I don't know how God's going to do it. But I'm just letting you know, don't play with God's people. And don't play with God. Because He will fix it for you. Another scripture in the Word of God that says there was a man, and we know him as Lazarus. And uh, he was in uh, the table of a rich man who would not give him a crumb from his table. And he had sores, and the scripture says the dogs came and licked his sores. And he scrunched around, 
some kind of way. I don't know how he was in the uh, company of this rich man, but he was there. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like some of these people we see with a sign will work for food. Uh, because he really was poor and sick. But he didn't know that what was coming was better than what had been. But God did not deliver him as he thought it might be. But one day, they both died. <laughs> and the scripture says that Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man went to hell. And the scripture says that the flames were licking so at this man he said, Lord, send somebody to tell my brothers not to come here. And then please send Lazarus to bring some water to cool my parching tongue. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. I'm not sending your brothers and I'm not sending Lazarus. Because they, for the first time you will realize there is a gulf between he and I. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing about it, there was no gulf while we were on earth. Right. You could have reached out yeah. and fed Lazarus. Yeah. You could have given him some money to help himself yeah. at a certain time. Yes. But you refused. Oh my God, help me. You refused. Because you were high and mighty. And you had everything that you needed. And so you looked down from this poor man that was wretched and needed some help. And you said no. And you turned your back. Lord said, Lord, can't do it on the body. He said, well, if you can't say that, please tell my brothers, don't come here. But God said, I can't do that either. Because there is a God. And it's been can't come to you, you can't come to him. So you're going to have to stay in your misery. But Lazarus didn't realize that when he was in his misery that what was coming was better than what he was. It was better than what it been. All of the abilities of heaven was at Lazarus' disposal. What I want to let you know today is that whatever you've been going through and whatever the enemy has presented to you, don't turn your back on Jesus. Because what's coming is better than what's been. Don't turn your back on Jesus. Because he said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Say, but well, I, I keep on messing up. And, and, and the devil's behind me. And he's going to go on closer to Jesus. Just get closer to the Lord because what's coming is better. Yes. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God told yes. the men that were feeding his disciples. He said, You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your household will be saved. Yes. Somebody said, Well, I, I can't do it because I'm surrounded by all these evil people. It doesn't matter. What's coming is better than what's been. And God's going to fix it. I said, God is going to fix it. You can't fix it. Your family can't fix it. Nothing can fix it, but God can fix it. And he'll fix the situation for you. He'll help you through your trials. He'll help you through your tests. He'll help you through all of your tribulation. And the scripture says nothing. In any lies. In any lies shall hurt you. Yeah. And they say, well, it's hurting me now, but it's not going to hurt you continually. That's right. See, it might hurt for a little bit, yeah. but it's going to be better. Yeah. I got to tell a little boy, you know, it's time to take it out. He said, Bobby, it's hurting worse now. <laughs> but the mother said, what's coming is better than what's been. Right. You still have all of these infections and all of that, yes. but what's coming is better. Just endure. So if you endure affliction, if you endure the trial that you're in right now, don't let the devil change your mind. Don't let him make you think that God has forgotten about you. He 
says, brother, if you decide to be mine, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, he says, I am God, and I don't change. Friends may change. Husbands and wives may change. Oh, yes. Children may change. Yes. Don't depend on people. Yes. Depend on God. Oh, yes. God is your source. Yes. He's your source for your finance. Yes. Somebody said, well, you know, I've got to get it the best way I can. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Because God sees all you do. And he knows Oh, everything you say. So, don't lie to get money. Don't steal to get money. Don't trade your money for favors. Don't trade money for favors. Don't trade money for favors. Don't trade money for favors.
gifts. If, 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 the father, if a father knows how to give good gifts to his son, how much more do I know how to give good gifts to those that love me? So what he said, I want you to do is to love the Lord with all of your heart. Heart. Your heart. All of your soul and all of your mind and your strength. So I want you to give everything that you have to me and I will take it and I will soothe and massage that heart. And I'll cause it to beat right because it's beating for me. If it's beating for me, see, you beat some people, your heart is beating for folks. It's beating for that man that don't mean you a bit of good. It's beating for that woman that don't mean you nothing. But if you let that heart beat for folks, What's coming is better. What's better. So let not. See, he didn't say, I'm going to take care of the heart. He said, You let not your heart be troubled. It's a job that you have to do. Let not your heart. Say, Well, how am I going to do it? Everybody, stop breathing for just a minute. Hold your breath. Now breathe. Did you stop? Did you really stop? Yeah. Did you hold your breath? Yeah. What? How come you can't do it then? And what I'm saying is, you say, I can't think of what I'm thinking of. That's a lie to navigate. Because you, by your own will, you <laughs> held your breath for 10 seconds, whatever it was. I held that until my eyes were popping. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can change your mind in that same way. The things that you're thinking about, you can stop thinking about and think about Jesus. That man that you're thinking about all night. You can start thinking about Jesus all night. Is that right? I said, well, I woke up.
night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he's given thanks, he break it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take it Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Not because of what you did, but because of what he did. Yes, Remember right. him Thank and drink all of it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the blood. Thank you.